because a friend sent me light and I looked at it and I loved how customizable it was. Like it's super customizable. In fact, it's so customizable that I'm going to show you how to make a plugin because that's really the only reason I switched. So open up light or light XL. They are very similar, but you'll notice the difference between light XL and light is that light has, I mean, light XL has buttons and it's got a few nicer features and it uses less CPU. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make a plugin for Light or Light Excel. It'll work on both of them. And this is just going to be showing off how easy it is to customize because it really is very, very easy. Writing a plugin for VS Code, it's not as easy. <laughs> this is like the easiest thing ever. So open up your plugins directory, your plugins directory. If you're using Light, that will be in the data slash plugins folder. If you're using Light Excel, it will be in your standard Unix like directory thingy. So in my case, it's in my home folder slash dot config slash Light Excel slash plugins. It's nicer that way. Light does not have a way to do this, but open up this folder and make a new file in it. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you're using Light Excel is add the version tag. So you do Light dash Excel. 1.16, which is the latest version, because that's what you want this plugin to be compatible with. And we can save this as my stupid plugin dot Lua. These are all Lua files, and the thing about Lua is that it's a very small language with a small feature set, but it's very easy to pick up. Very, very easy. It's like Python, if Python wasn't really like Python. So, first thing, you're going to want to make local core equals require core. And core is one of the multitude of modules that Lite uses. So obviously this is the core module. So it's like the inner depths of Lite. And then we're also going to be doing local command equals require Core dot command. And what this does is it'll let you add commands. And Lite has this really nice command feature where you press the keyword, the keyboard shortcut, I believe the default is Control Shift P, and then you have all of these possible commands that plugins can add to, and you can add a keyboard shortcut to any of them. Another thing that's really nice is you have your user module, which is where you store all your settings. So there's no like settings thing. You just like, here's my additions to the key map. Here's my plugin configuration. Here's my color theme. It's all in this Lua script. And if you're using Light Excel, it'll have a bunch of comments with examples. If you're using Light, no, it's like Arch Linux versus Manjaro. But anyway, anyway, back to my stupid plugin. Plugins are Basically, they have the same exact power as your user module. So if you want to do something very, very basic, instead of making a plugin for it, you could put the code in your user module. But if you want it to be you know, more complex, then you might want to make a plugin, and you could submit it to the plugins directory. I have two plugins on there right now. One of them is code formatters. So you can do alt Shift f just like in VS Code, and it'll format your code for you. And the other one is autosave. Anyway. Local, this is the last one, I promise. Key map. Well, it's not the last one that exists, but it's the last one that I'm going to be using for this example. Equals require core dot key map. And by the way, there is no documentation for this. So this is the best you've got. There's no list of like all the things, but if you go into your your data slash core folder, which is in a different place if you're using light versus light excel, but it's the same thing. You'll see there's view, tokenizer, tile view, syntax, status view, strict, style, start, root view, object, nag view, mod keys, log view, etc. There's a whole bunch of them. And when you want something to happen, like to be triggered by a function, what you do is you actually you store a copy of the function in like a different variable. And then you redefine that function as something different and at the very end you return the return value of your copy of the function and that's how you do it which 
sounds confusing, but I think it's actually a really nice way of doing it, better than event listeners. Anyway, we're not doing that. This is a very simple, basic plugin. It's also very dumb. So now we're going to do local function do underscore dumb stuff. And this function will demonstrate some of the many abilities that plugins have. So core dot log. This is it puts like the text down here. Basically, this what you see here, that's a log. Core dot log. Welcome to Cuck Me Curbs Dumb Plugin. Then we're going to do core dot reload underscore module in parentheses colors dot github. Now if you're using light this will not work. This will crash your plugin, it won't load properly. So if you're using light, don't put this line in here. Instead, you can require it, but it requires the color theme to be installed, which it isn't by default. So Light XL, it uses a different way of activating color themes, and it also comes with a whole bunch pre-installed. This is why I have done this. And the reason I'm doing colors.github is because it's a light mode. like. Light as in burning your eyes out, not one megabyte of RAM. So yeah, basically this plugin only exists to mess with you. Now, command.perform. This is another thing that you can do. Root colon split dash up. And what this does is it is the equivalent of typing root split up. And it does this. Anyway, so it's going to do that, and then it's going to do command.perform root colon split left, just to be extra annoying. It's going to split your view up. Now we're going to do core dot command underscore view colon enter. And what this does is the equivalent of like prompt in JavaScript or input in Python where it will ask for input. This is built into light. And I'm just gonna have it be ah! okay, that's good. Uh, and then we're gonna do function text, so a callback function for when the input is you know entered. And down here we gotta do end. And then we're just gonna do core dot error, which is exactly the same as core dot log except it's yellow instead of white or whatever your color theme says. It's it's different, but it's a different color and a different icon, but other than that, it's the same. And we're just gonna do uh, space dot dot text to add the text to that string dot dot more screaming, more incoherent screaming. And then to be extra annoying, we're going to do core dot active view colon on underscore text input. And you would think that this is like on text input what but what this function actually does is it takes the text that's passed to it which normally would be passed to it by like whatever handles the keyboard the keystrokes but instead we're going to pass a string to it ah! dot i mean not dot double dot you know text to add the text to it and that's that's it what we're going to do for this function for right now we can't we don't have a way of like executing this function and that's where these commands come in we want to add a new command to this list here and there's tons and tons of them as you can see so that we can you know do it so command dot add and then the first parameter is like the scope like where it's gonna where it's gonna go when this command is executed. So in our case, core dot doc view, and that's the case in most cases. So because doc view is this this thing right here where, where the text is, where you can see the where you can view the doc. We're going to add a new array. I mean table. <laughs> it's an array, basically, and the first one's going to be the name of the command. So the format for these commands is first you put the name of the thing that runs the command. So you'll see 
doc colon cut or sort colon sort macro colon play so I'm gonna do my dumb plugin and the dashes are converted into spaces if you do underscores it doesn't so you know keep that in mind and then it's colon and then the name of the command so do dumb stuff and then at the end you do equals and give it a function in our case the function we defined up there do dumb stuff now if we save this file it's automatically saved for me because I've got my autosave plugin which only works with light Excel anyway we got this function here but if we search for the thing it's not here that's because you have to reload light so in light Excel you just press control shift R or I guess command shift R if you're on a Mac and it will just restart itself but if you're on light not Excel then you're not on a Mac and you have to close it and reopen it but it's essentially the same unsave changes what uh, oh yeah quit anyway and I'm gonna do that one more time to you know reload my my workspace and then I think that's a bug but anyway then now we can search for my dumb plugin do dumb stuff press enter and oh no it's light mode not that kind of light the other kind of light the blinding mode and it's asking us for input as per what's right here and I'm gonna be like blah 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 and as you can see it adds it into the text box and I don't want that go away so I'm gonna close all these and I'm gonna reload my workspace in dark mode <laughs> and then this is great and all but we want to be able to get to this this really annoying thing as fast as possible I mean I want to be able to trigger light mode at the click of a button so keymap.add this is how you add to the key map and then you give it a new array and it works the exact same way as the second parameter in command.add so in square brackets you know control plus alt plus B that's a good one equals and then you do the name of the command so if you want to add something to the key map it has to be first added to the command there we go now save this reload light and now control alt B oh no it's light mode and it's asking me for input and it's adding random stuff to my files <laughs> but in all seriousness in all seriousness this is incredibly useful now get out of here and for example I made a formatter plugin that formats your code for you so for example if I go back to my dumb plugin and I indent this too much and I don't indent this and I indent this randomly uh, and I put a bunch of oh no no and I put a bunch of spaces here alt shift F and you wait a second and it's formatted beautifully so you know that's what plugins are useful for and you know what the coolest thing is look how many lines of code this took 54 for that formatter thing now obviously I didn't write the actual formatter itself just the thing that does it but still 54 lines. Try doing that in VS Code. Anyway, thanks for watching and subscribe if you feel like it. And go download Light or Light XL. I'll put links to both in the description. They're really wonderful. And if you value your free RAM, look at that 1.5 megabytes. And look at how many plugins I have installed 1.5. Oh, now it's at 2. And now it's back down to 1.5 megabytes. It's so nice how few megabytes it uses. Oh, and I forgot what I was going to say. As you can see, light hasn't been touched in a year. Whereas light Excel was last touched a few hours ago. Wait, what? 1.16.7 already? 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to download the new version of Light. Literally 1.16.6 came out a couple days ago. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm out. I'm gonna download the new thingy.